that's what we have to stay focused on. If we can continue to take the incremental steps to get us going in the right direction. But there is no way in eight months we are going to rectify almost 30 years of fiscally irresponsible policies that have come out of Washington, D.C. That's what we face. Now, we've got to do something about our Medicare program. Because in 13 years, Medicare is bankrupt. For people that are 55 years and above, the plan, the proposal, the reform uh, plan that we're putting forth, it does not touch anyone that's 55 years or older. I'm 50 years old. If we don't do something for Medicare right now, it's not going to be there for me. And even more so, it will not be there for some of the people that are in Medicare at this time. We have to start looking at what are some of the viable solutions that we can do. We have to move away from this fee for service. We have to look at the fraud, waste, and abuse that is in Medicare. South Florida is ground zero. Medicare for our ways and means. And we've got to look at the means by which we can rectify that. One of the things I know out there right now, there are Medicare senior patrols. People in the senior communities that are going around talking to each other about how do we go out and share the things that we're seeing as far as far ways and means of Medicare. I had an opportunity to talk to a, uh, a group of individuals that does the, uh, the lab testing pathological lab testing, just located right over here on RCA Boulevard. And they talked about the means by which we can streamline this program so that we don't have increased costs to go to our seniors with all of these additional pathology and these additional tests that they're having to take. So there are means by which we can improve this system. And we've got to do that or else Medicare won't be there for anyone. Our debt, as I said, is slowly but surely overtaking our GDP. Right now it's 73%. And any economist will tell you that when your debt to GDP ratio hits 80 to 85%, you're about to destroy your economy. And that's where we are. We have got to turn it around. We cannot be to the point where what we owe equals what we're producing. 47% of the debt of the United States of America is held by foreign nations. 27% of that debt is held by China. Interestingly enough, while I was in Israel, there was a pretty, pretty peculiar visitor to Israel while I was there. It was the chief of the Chinese People's Liberation Army. Be very weird. 47% of wage-earning households in the United States of America pay no federal income taxes. <laughs> that is a very dangerous statistic when you sit down and understand it. We have about 53% that is pulling the wagon in this country. Now let's talk about the facts. Let's talk about that top 1% of wage earners. That top 1% of wage earners pay about 37% of the taxes in the United States of America. The top 5% of wage earners pay about 53 to 54% of the taxes in this country. The top 25% of wage earners in the United States of America pay 86% of the taxes in this country. That's why it is not about shared sacrifice. That's why we got to make more people shareholders in the United States of America. And that's why I believe that a flat tax system is a great system to go to for our personal income tax rate. Anywhere from 13 to maybe 16%. And you have two deductions. You have a child tax credit, and you have a mortgage interest tax deduction. Why those two? Because we want families. And we want families to have homes. And those are the two deductions I think we can simplify that tax code. And here, very simple. $240 billion in two months. That's all you would get. The federal government right now is spending about three to four billion dollars a day. It's not a revenue problem. It's a spending problem in the United States of America. Can you repeat that? I didn't hear that, sir. That fact? I didn't hear that. I apologize. But I didn't three hear to four that. billion dollars a day Where? Is, what, is what the federal government is spending. It's also three billion a week, though, for so, the war, sir. It's a revenue problem. And that's why I say it is about expanding this tax base so we can get more revenues in. And that's a historically proven thing in the economy of the United States of America. 
as a free market trend process is that if you can lower those tax rates, if you can curtail the spending coming out of Washington, D.C., it will increase the revenues that are being produced. Because the more money that we put into your pockets, guess what happens? It's about going out and spending. It's about goods and services. And therefore, if you're requesting more goods and services, then small businesses are growing. But right now, with the regulatory environment, the tax environment that we have, that is not what's happening. The United States of America has the second highest corporate business tax rate in the world at 35%. When you combine that with the 4 to 6% of state level corporate business tax rate, now you're talking about 39 to 41% for our corporations and businesses. When you hear that corporate profits are up, they are indeed up, but they're not up in the United States of America. They're up overseas, which is where people are going because they have competitive tax rates. If we were to just take the corporate business tax rate, in the United States of America and bring it down to 21%. And in doing that, eliminate loopholes and eliminate subsidies. Just give our corporations and businesses a competitive tax rate. Then you will see trillion dollars of capital come back to the United States of America. And we can get back to doing what our corporate business sector and our small businesses want to do. Grow their businesses. Hire Americans. Get back to producing. Get back to manufacturing in this country. That's what we have.